Welcome to Behind the Backline, the podcast where we chat with merchants, brands, and industry professionals in the musical instrument, pro audio, and event technology space about their products, services, industry trends, stories, and more. Join us now as we dig into the stories behind our favorite backline gear. Welcome to Behind the Backline. I'm Matt Jacoby, founder of Octave Media, an inbound marketing agency focused on helping music merchants develop an automated solution to increase website sales. Today, I am speaking with Chad Patrick of The Drum Wallet. Thanks for joining me today, Chad. Thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to talking about your product. So, um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about who you are and what uh, The Drum Wallet does. Well, um, First of all, I'm a drummer and a percussionist, and I, I teach drums. I have taught drums now for about 25 years, and I've been been playing for quite a while. And um, I fancy myself a product developer now that I have one on the mark, two on the market. Um, but I've just always had kind of a creative mind, and those of us that, that play drums that are into music, they're always trying to find uh, ways to solve little problems that we have or to make things easier for us. So that's kind of where, where my background is. Cool. So I know we're, we're kind of here to cover the, the drum wallet itself, but um, what is the second product? I, I actually forget which one that was. Oh, it's okay. I released, uh, well, it's been planned since the very beginning, but I finally brought to market a smaller version called the Pocket Watch. And it's just uh, basically the same design as the drum wallet, just smaller and more round, literally the same size as a pocket watch used to be. And um, it's just does the same thing, but just a, a little less. It's got a smaller footprint. Some people are intimidated by the size of the drum wallet. So uh, yeah. And they both uh, they both kind of operate the same way in terms of like hang hanging from the drum and being able to get flipped up. Or... Yeah, absolutely. They both uh, go on to the drum in the same way. Um, just uh, the scale is a little bit different is all. But yeah, the attachment to the drum is all the same. And uh, where you would engage it with the stick to put it on and take it off is exactly uh, exactly the same. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, um, you know, for me, I, I've seen it. Um, so I, I, it was easy for me to visualize and ask about the other product. But um, just for the, the sake of um, people listening, um, can you explain a little bit um, what the drum wallet actually is? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, it was many, many years ago. I was, I think it was in like Modern Drummer Magazine. They were doing an interview with somebody and they talked about how they used the, you know, the drum wallet on the recording. And since then, of course, I've been very educated on the use of wallets on a snare drum, you know, for recordings and things. And uh, I always loved the way that mine sounded. And I was frustrated by other products on the market. My band was very, very diverse and going from song to song and style to style. And I wanted to get more diversity out of my snare drum. But I also wanted to be able to do it quickly. And I also wanted to be able to change it back, uh, you know, just as easily as my guitar player would step on a distortion pedal. So I thought that the wallet to me sounded the best out of all of the things that I had used, because when the drum is hit, it gives the full attack and the wallet kind of bounces off the head momentarily. And so that attack is still big and pure. And, and then it just falls back down and muffles the overtones. So I literally made a list of all the products I'd ever used uh, and all that I had ever seen or researched could find online and had to classify all of the other products that do the same general thing into different categories, you know, and I tried to take pros and cons of everything and make a product that had only the pros and, you know, very few or none of the cons. <laughs> so that's where, yeah. <laughs> So, um, uh, in terms of like, uh, uh, and I, uh, I, I'm a drummer, but I actually have never heard the, um, the, the, wallet uh, the, ter the term, wall the term wallet before in terms of what that is, is, I mean, it, would you classify it like as essentially a muffle or, uh, yeah, well, I mean, literally your wallet, that's what it was is the drummer would take their wallet out of their pocket and set it on the edge of their snare drum. And so, um, I loved that, but there are a few disadvantages to taking your wallet out of your pocket on stage all the time. Those that have <laughs> your wallet over the years will tell you, you know, it sucks when your cards fall out or you hit it and, and it sticks on the edge of your stick and flips off the riser or what have you, you know, it was just, it was born out of convenience and, um, you know, I, I lean on the history of it, you know, entire record labels built their libraries you know, based on that snare drum sound. Got it. So I, I guess I kind of assume that's where um, other muffles like rings and the gels and stuff kind of came into play or existence. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody wanted to try to do the same thing. And, and it was to, uh, to clean up some of those overtones. 
you know, especially when you're recording. A lot of times they want a dry signal when they're recording. You can add all kinds of things and reverbs and stuff after the fact. But they just wanted to be able to clean that up. If, you know, you're playing in a small environment. Those tones can be really harsh to a listener sometimes, too. So it really just comes down to trying to fit your environment better and be more musical and, and uh, actually add some diversity to your sound as well. Got it. Yeah, I guess I, I feel like I'm, and I, I mean, I, I've been a drummer for, for over 20 years too, but I almost feel like I should have known about that or um, it, even the, the wallet um, trick. I, I, I guess I did not get that. Uh, well, you know what? I never had <laughs> private lessons, you know, I learned in the public <laughs> school system. And so I didn't really have an older drum mentor. And when I was a young drummer, you know, we had uh, like a beta VCR with a corded remote on it. You know what I mean? There wasn't, it was like really hard at first to access any information. I used to stay up until midnight on Friday nights just to watch, you know, Friday night videos so I could watch some, somebody play drums and so, you know, so I lived in a place where I didn't have cable until I was a senior in high school, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. So if you don't have a mentor in your life, then I wouldn't expect people to know about it, really. It's kind of an insider trick. And the only reason I found out about it is I, I stumbled across it in an interview in Modern Drummer. And, you know, there are people that will that'll swear by it and tell you about the history of, you know, of it. And, and it's just, it just made too much sense to me. And I built my own and people just started commenting on it, you know? Well, that puts a lot of perspective for someone who did not get the memo on that trade secret as to why it's called the drum wallet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's literally based on on that trick of a man using his wallet. And half of that issue is that it's convenient. You know, it's right there. Yeah. And that's why I wanted a product that hung on the side of the drum is I always wanted it there. You know, I was picturing, uh, hopefully nobody like assumes that, oh, I can put my cards in it and still flip it up on the drum. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are, there have been versions like that, you know, that have been brought to market that actually had, you know, weights the size of cards really literally based on on the design of a wallet. Um, and it's I wouldn't expect people really to know that. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of what my product is, is kind of uh, education. Young drummers, I mean, young drummers are putting thousand dollar phones on their snare drum to cut their overtones, for God's sakes, you know? <laughs> oh man, I, I haven't even thought of that one. I, that's, yeah. no, I, I just, I just, I'm like, oh, there's products out there in the, the gels I'm not a big fan of. I do have a Remo rim, but, or a ring, but um, yeah. you know, it, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, I'd prefer not to have anything if you can try to make the drum sound, uh, you know, in a sweet spot naturally sure. but you know that's not always possible of course so. sure. yeah absolutely and then you know i was a i was a snare drummer in you know drum line in high school and i prefer a much higher tensioned head so that makes the overtones greatly increased especially while i was playing you know a six inch deep steel snare drum so um i was one that really liked to be able to get that twang and that that over ring when I'm playing, you know, some wet New Orleans second line style, or I want to kill the snare drum and use it on a reggae tune and get that delayed, you know, uh, uh, decrescendo kind of a thing going on, you know, or use mm -hmm. it in, in, in more of a musical setting. So it just allowed more and more flexibility. That's cool. Yeah, that's... I kind of like that. I know that it's, it, it's, it's something to, to work... Or like, for me, I was like, well... Um, I'd love to even give it a shot, you know, just kind of see how it, how it compares to like, um, um, the ring that I have now and just, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm never going to really like trash talk any other company. Mm -hmm. I'm not that kind of a person. I want to do business that way. I feel like there's plenty of other great products out there, but you know, n nobody was making a product that you could take off and on, like you can turn your snare on and off you know, and that's what I wanted. My guitar player would play a totally different instrument by putting his foot on one button. And that, you know, if we're going in a set from a 311 song into a Fleetwood Mac song, people that know, you know, Chad Sexton's snare drum does not sound like Mick Fleetwood's <laughs> snare drum. You know, that's yeah. why people bring eight snares into the studio. That's why in any electronic kit, there's five different electronic snare sounds because they're different, you know. And my product just allows a drum to double its sonic potential. That's it. Very cool. So um, how long has it been on the market? Um, I officially launched it. I wanted it memorable. So it was 010110. The January 1st of 2010 is when I officially brought it to the market and um, launched it officially through the trade show. I just gave them to friends in the industry and artists that I was acquaintances with and some that I met uh, through NAM. 
uh, at the first winter trade show. And then we launched officially with a booth in NAM in summer 2010. And then for those six months, really built things up for winter NAM 2011 is where, you know, Southern California and a lot of people saw it for the first time, other than the magazine reviews and stuff. Okay, cool. And the the little one is not quite out yet, or is just about. Yeah, to- um, I, I have one in my hand, uh, oh. but <laughs> we're we're fixing uh, one issue with manufacturer. I had to return them to the manufacturer to make a couple of little changes. Um, we're, we sourced some new materials, and so we're still figuring out, you know, costs and stuff like that. But I'm super proud of it. Um, the drum wallet is redesigned in the same materials. And uh, it's the best product I've ever had. And it's really neat to see the evolution of it over the years. Oh, definitely. I bet. Yeah. Going from like a prototype to where it's kind of handmade to actually getting some uh, more durable and uh, And marketable. Yeah. Yeah. We're working with our fourth manufacturer. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. That's a whole Rocky Mountain kind of a thing. Cool. So where, where is uh, where is it kind of available right now to people to purchase? Um, well, you can always get it directly through the website, thedrumwallet.com. It kind of depends on where you are in the world. It would be best for you if you're uh, in Southern California in LA and you like to uh, hit up a shop. You could always roll into pro, the Pro Drum Shop in Hollywood. Um, they have them in stock. Uh, you can get them different pro shops. Uh, it's It's hard for me to try to go through the list because it's somewhat scattered. I'm mainly doing my uh, own distribution still. Um, I have some exclusive contracts with some distributors overseas and we've sold the product in about 14 countries or so now, but um, mostly I'm still distributing directly and people can buy off the website. Cool. So like how, um, how popular has it been? I mean, has it been very, fairly well received by people at all levels? Yeah, it's been super well received. The interesting thing about it is I learned I learned so much about it constantly. Um, you know, I was I was not a business uh, you know, major. I didn't want to necessarily uh maybe turn this into a business. I was uh, really looking at just wanting to license the product to begin with. I have lots of other ideas and in other industries and I kind of wanted this to be my resume. But by the turn of events that have occurred, you know, right after our first big winter NAM, we lost our manufacturing. The company that was making them got sold to another company. And then another similar thing happened the following year. So here we are at trade shows with some product that were made for us, but we don't have anybody to make anymore. And the relationships we built is really difficult to follow through on. So, you know, uh, I've ended up just it's become, you know, so much of my life because I have investors, uh, friends and family and loved ones that got behind the product. So I can't just, uh, you know, uh, let it sit because it's, I tell people it's like pushing a boulder uphill, but you know, I see the ground moving at my feet and it's great. It's well received by some of the most, uh, you know, incredible players in the world. And so it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It just takes a lot of work. Yeah. That I, I've never, uh, um, had the the pleasure. I've talked to a few people already on, on here that, uh, have kind of told me a little bit about how strenuous or, or how how um, tedious the the manufacturing um, process can be for any kind of product. And I mean, I've always been more of a service guy, so I, I can't even imagine what what you know going through that that product. Um, process is like. Yeah, well, you experience a lot of the same things uh, being a sole proprietor of something. It's just a different animal. It's hard when it's out of your hands. You just have, I sit back uh, sometimes and won't try to be uh, too pushy with correspondence or this or that sometimes now because I know that there's some things I'm not going to be able to, like, for example, uh, I, I am backward on the product. You know, this is the first real uh, traditional run for consumers. Uh, since the trade show. So um, I was filling back orders and and basically I didn't want to tell everybody for sure I'm going to give it to you by get it to you by Saturday because when I went to pick them up, you know, there was an issue. So I know just to give a little more time and I tell everybody as best I can, I try to keep real good communication with those that have a back order waiting or whatever and let them know, you know, this is a sole proprietorship. It does take a lot of people to make this product happen though you know six or seven different people end up getting paid in the process and so you know it's a little business and as 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 such it it takes a lot of attention and a lot of work that nobody pays you for (laughs) yeah yeah definitely (laughs) yeah i've worked with a a company in another uh space for a while um 
it was actually animal pharmaceuticals and uh, wow. they were, they were just kind of getting started, you know, just him and his wife and trying to go through all of the, the manufacturing, you know, kind of getting everybody on board. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a godsend once you finally start to f- pick up your distribution channels, but especially being a, a shop that size, you know, um, I can relate, but I, I don't have the physical product, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But so much of it's the same, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting uh, process. And, and it, of course, it's taken longer than, than I anticipated. But, you know, that's kind of naturally the way things seem to go for me. I think, they, uh, I think I'm kind of slow out of the blocks, so to speak. But I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I just, I've had meetings in the past that if they went a certain way, you know, then, a, you know, a check would have been cut at the end of them. They've been, I've been very close. And that's what's frustrating is for people is they, uh, you know, for me about the way people see like an inventor or a product developer, they think you're absolutely crazy until it works. And then you're a genius. But to 99% of the people, the one thing that stands in between those things is a check getting endorsed. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard. I can get notoriety and I can get all kinds of things. But until I can write checks to a couple people that invested in me years ago and helped me get the patent and stuff, then it's not as successful as I want yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This so, year is the year that that things things climb a lot for us. Cool. So, um, do you have like, is it uh, kind of like just venture capital right now, now or is it, uh, or like investor, like just general no, investors, or do you have like clients? Just, just friends and family, general, okay. Okay. general strapping type of stuff. I looked at doing crowdfunding, but I I don't see a team that I'd be able to lean on enough, uh, or that I could ask of that kind of a commitment without some financial you know, uh, gains for sure. And crowdfunding can, you can tell people that you'll pay them a percentage of what comes, but if it doesn't, it's, it's a challenging thing to, to work on right now in this climate. So there's lots of, lots of ways. And if you don't have, uh, you know, I gave up credit cards mostly for a long time ago and it's hard to run a business without having a bunch of credit cards to keep things moving or, you yeah. know, operating capital. So I have seven part-time jobs, you know, and, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I get a lot of work and, you know, I'm working three or four jobs in one day. And sometimes, you know, I'm only working for the drum wallet and a lesson or two, you know, but it's okay. I kind of know this feeling right now because the, what the marketing stuff is very, uh, is, is still pretty young for me in this, especially this niche, but, um, yeah, I kind of, kind of doing a similar thing. I don't have that many jobs yet, but, but, well, but I know the pain. <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm bragging or anything, you yeah, know, yeah. but, but basically what I think I'm trying to say when I do that is that I'm, I'm in a position where I'm trying to, to do what I can to keep things rolling and, and I'm open to stuff. You know, a couple of years ago, I told my, you know, I told myself, it doesn't matter how old I am. If somebody were to do all, you know, take care of me to wash some dishes, I'd wash some dishes. And right now on Saturday nights when I'm not gigging, I'm, I'm washing dishes for a, a great little company that are treating me well when I wash their dishes. So, you know, I, I, I work sometimes out of town. I'll put in, uh, you know, 40 hours over a long weekend in Vegas, uh, you know, and they'll give me a check when I leave. And so it helps me. And, and, and uh, I'm in a lot of circles and that's how things grow. And that's how networking happens. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I can completely relate with that. I've, I've seen the power of networking in the last year and a half for myself. So for sure, that's your gig. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, going back to the whole, uh, uh, you know, the branding of, of the wallet, yeah. have you seen a, uh, like an age gap in the, in the, type of people who are picking it up, like do younger people not realize what it is versus older people who are very familiar with the term that know exactly what it does or is there you like- know what there is, there is a, a little bit of a gap. And what's interesting is that I've, I've watched the uh, number of um, like the percentage of when I ask drummers, if they've heard of the drum wallet specifically, and I've watched that, that drop a little bit. Um, in the last couple of years because it's been a couple of years since it was, you know, really in the magazines and stuff. And I do things online, but you're always trying to grow that. The younger uh, student or, or, you know, players seem to have picked it up if they've picked it up either off of YouTube or from an older player or, or, you know, a lot of them still have never seen it. Like I'm saying, people are putting their phones on there. But older players, most of the older players, I would say like 35 and older, um, are familiar with okay. it. 
Yeah. And, and maybe not with my product, but I mean with using a wallet. And so most, a lot of people will look at it and they just nod their head and they get it immediately. And, and other people, it needs, it's, you know, it's a lot of education involved. Yeah, I can definitely tell. That's kind of what I was getting at. Cause I, uh, with my, my digital marketing aspect, you know, that's kind of what, what it's all about is just providing that, that, that source of content that, that educates that market. And, and, you know, they're going to f- maybe f- to come across something in that aspect, like via video or Google search or something. So, you know, I've, I feel like you have a, a, a lot of potential to tap yet in terms of just educating the younger market. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm even working with a, a nonprofit organization that works with NAM to uh, perform as a percussionist in schools all over the southern part of the state. So um, I'm working on, uh, you know, doing that and, and just trying to, uh, keep everything rolling in a positive way. I've got some amazing artists, you know, um, that have taken it to places like, you know, Abbey Road and Radio City Music Hall and, hmm. you know, things that I would have would have dreamt about being able to do when I was a, a little kid, you know, coming up with something that people would embrace. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky it works and, and I'll be damned if it doesn't fit just like every snare drum out there. And, and now <laughs> with the new designs, um, they they work quite well on the other drums as well so it opens uh opens the product up to toms and we've looked at uh some bass drum products possibly even some cymbal products it's all been in the plan from the very beginning but well uh, i know that this this right now just you know i'm i'm 35 i'm on your your age gap line and um i i guess i fell in the younger crowd because you know that was completely new to me <laughs> yeah that's okay man it, it all comes down to yeah all the experience and that's what's great about uh drummers i feel as a group as a population i feel like we're way more open to sharing and educating each other uh than other groups of musicians in my experience and i know that this experience is not mine alone because i've had this discussion with several professionals who work in services that work with the music industry such as photographers and things like that and they tend to agree it's a really good uh group to be a part of i feel I mean, it's the, you know, mankind's first instrument that was created uh, to make music and bring people together. So it, it it's still got a lot of that spirit and power behind it. And that's why I'm, I'm all for it. And I'm, that's why I didn't come out with my home and garden product first, you know, <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> um, actually, while we're sitting here, I was thinking, okay, you know, you said that other drummer, younger drummers will use their phone and like, okay, well, that's mm-hmm. seems like a expensive it's mistake definitely. waiting to happen. Quite a risky, uh, quite a risky situation, especially when, I've, you know, I'll read uh, hater comments and stuff, which they're, they're not too thick on the product online, because I think most people get it and they see that I came up with something that worked for me and I wanted to share it with drummers. You know, one of the things they'll say is oh, I could I could make that for two dollars. And, and I was like, well, you couldn't make one like this for two dollars. <laughs> you could make something for two dollars. Absolutely, you could. But, you know, why wouldn't you go ahead and you know, invest in a product that's made here, that's made out of 80% recycled materials, got a lifetime warranty on it, you know, it's used and proven by some of the biggest names in the industry. And it's like, why would you go on there and just hate and talk about how you could make it yourself for $3? You know, for sure you could. Is it going to be packaged? Is it going to be able to, you know, make a beep when somebody scans the UPC on it? You know, there's a lot going on. And, uh, I like to educate people on that too. I'm not going to ever claim that it's all me because there's a lot of people that have to help make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. There's a lot of pieces for the, for a physical product. Um, I was just thinking um, if there's, if there's ever a need for like a third line for these to make a phone holder version. Oh yeah. There you go. That just, you can put the phone in it. It provides the weight, but you add the padding so that it's not affecting the phone. (laughs) There you go. So then they get the best of both worlds. Yeah, there you go. Unfortunately, the phones now are even bigger than the drum wallet. So then I'm back to that issue. Again. That is very true. Yeah, I probably would cover up a lot of the head. But if, I mean, if the younger people are already throwing them on there, they're probably sticking the... the uh... Maybe I'll just make dummy phones that don't have anything in them. <laughs> They'll just go on there and they can beat the crap out of it. There you go. Yeah, if it's just like a... We'll plan it to last about two years. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to get a, a good... Um, to your contract deal out of that. And then uh, yeah, somebody's already using that idea. Like, <laughs> it would be, it'd be a good residual um, income model. <laughs> See, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> um, so prior to uh, 2010, how long was the product, the initial product kind of in development? Oh man, you know, and, and I don't want to stretch it out too long. Cause I know we're getting close to your time area, but um, 
you know, it was stuck for a year with a manufacturer whose business went down because he got a DUI, you know, and I had a contract with him. And so I, it took me a long time to try to rope that in. Literally about a year, I had to educate myself on, on how to write legal letters and what the process was going to be in the state and how I had to go, you know, just a lot of due diligence. Mm-hmm. And then it was kind of stuck for a year with an attorney who had a retainer that just didn't return my call. So there's literally like two years right there in the process, just hung up on something, some legal issue, because I wanted to do it right. I initially got an attorney because I wanted to contact uh, you know, a, a prior patent holder to ask them about licensing their patent. I wanted to be a nice guy and see if I could work it into my product because it was just sitting there. They weren't doing anything with it. But, you know, attorneys charge like $250 an hour. So you just sat on the retainer after writing a couple of letters. And, and it literally it took, uh, it, it took like 17 years from the time that I came up with it to the, you know, to see in it moving out on shelves. And stuff. Oh my Goodness, that's a long time. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't pursuing it the entire time. It sat in a, in a filing cabinet with a lot of other ideas. And I said to myself, I don't really want to pass on with, you know, a filing cabinet full of great ideas. And, and so I had to move on something. And that's the one that I decided on because that's where my areas of expertise were. And that's where most of my life was. You know, I've managed music stores and I've been a teacher and a player and, a, you know, an artist relations person. And I've done all these little different things for different people. And that's why it was the one that made sense to me, you know, to, to push. Wow. So uh, the last question I had in your own that was, um, yeah. when did it initially become a new idea? I mean, the, the, obviously you, you took the idea from people using the walls and the phones and everything. Yeah. But like, when yeah. did that kind of spark? Yeah, it was, um, it was probably about the same time that I moved into the house I'm in right now. It's, it's been about 18 years. Okay. Yeah. I was off a little bit on the 17, you know, when it was looking probably more like 15 from the time I really, uh, you know, it took about 10 years from the time that I really wanted to push it to getting it to the point where it was like patent pending and I could put it in public. Oh, yeah. That's all just... together over 15 years. Wow. Well, you, you have the patience of a saint and now you're finally starting to reap that reap that benefits. <laughs> well, you know, I had a, I had a job a long time ago and the boss was like, you know, Chad, if you got a great product, you can F up a lot. And it's not to say that I've effed up a lot, but I do have a great product and I know that it's just going to continue to grow. It's just really hard, you know, in Southern California without a ton of overhead and, you know, but just life, it's just, it's just tough to do it as, as one. So that's why I rely on my artists and, and people. If, if artists just picked up the postings and things like that and exposing the fact that they use it like some of them do, um, you know, that's going to help a lot. And, and people will see it's going to be in easily in a dozen periodicals in the next like uh, six months. It's going to be all over the place in the next six months. So great. You'll see it. And do you have some like larger um, musicians who could or potentially endorse it? Yeah, absolutely. I have a really big, uh, long list. I, I endorse people with a, a little bit of a different philosophy than a lot of the other companies. You know, some of them have products that cost $2,000. Uh, you know, I don't. Um, and, and I really just want to work with good people. I want to work with good people who enjoy my product and who will share it with other people. That's really where it begins and ends. Um, I make calls sometimes on if I give product out. Um, I've given product out to people on all levels. So it's not like I just have somebody that I think is famous and I give them product for me. That's an investment and it's paid off time and time again. And I'll argue that in any court if somebody wants to challenge me on that. But <laughs> names, names like, uh, like Omar Hakim, you know, when he bought, he bought like 20 of them uh, to give as Christmas gifts when you're, and, you know, he did a commercial for Diodario's new heads this last year, and there was a drum wall on his side snare that he was playing on for the first half of the commercial. Oh, cool. And that was a commercial for new drum heads. So my artists uh, are using them, and, and they're helping me. They're seeing now the, their importance of helping to share it because, you know, when it's in a commercial for new drum heads, I think drum companies and drum head companies think that products like mine are created because we think their products aren't good enough. I think that's kind of a common misconception that we made a product because their product isn't good enough or, or we don't know how to tune a drum. And that's not true. I get that all the time. You know, and you understand you're a, you would, you're what I would call probably a purist. And that's somebody who doesn't want to ever play with really any muffling unless there's a really drastic occasion for it. And I'm totally cool with that. I understand. I get it. Um, but 
my playing life and situation necessitated something different. And I've also converted a lot of purists. You know, it's a cool little thing to get in your stocking or to keep in your stick bag in case you need it. Because once you've used it, you'll see uh, what it, you know, what it can do by just uh, playing it with it on during the verse and then flipping it off during the chorus, for example, hmm. and putting it back on for the verse again. That's just something that changes the way the part feels. And so people, people start to see the value in it more and more once they get their hands on. That's a cool, cool angle on it. I kind of would have just assumed, oh, from song to song, but I suppose you really could just change it instead of versus having more than one snare drum. Cause I know some people have a, a drum, a snare drum on either side of the hi hat and then they'll yeah, have yeah. The different tunings and stuff. So yeah, I do that too. And they both have drum wallets on them okay. because then now I get two snare drums and twice the sound out of each of those snare drums. One thing that I like to do is flip it off. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's in position for me and I'm the inventor. It's in position for me about probably 95% of the time because I love the way my snare drum sounds with it on, you know, mm -hmm. but I will take it off and turn the snare drum off and then we get that timbali sound again, you know, and that's something that was gone out of a lot of other muffling things is because you couldn't just take it off. Or if you did, where were you going to put it? You know, and I was tired of leaning over and trying to pick up something off the ground because I sit kind of high and it's, we're not built to do that. At least those of us that are aging, which is like, I guess everyone. So, <laughs> well, cool. Know. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, just to reiterate on what uh, your website is so uh, people can find more about your product. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, one of those that's pretty easy to remember. It is www.thedrumwallet.com. Yeah, and the new product is called the Pocket Watch. And so if you want, there'll be a bunch of uh, artist interview videos that I finally tracked some software down that will help me try to reduce the NAM noise in the background. <laughs> so that's part of this is, you know, training yourself on software and things like that. If you don't have the ability to pay somebody else, you got to try to resource it yourself, you know, so things take a while. No, I, I hear you. I am in the same boat. <laughs> but don't be popping up. So, the, you know, there's stuff already online. If you're on Facebook, you know, there's a, we'd love to, to gain uh, more, more friends and likes online. So we have an Instagram, uh, the drum wallet, and I do some, a really cool thing called uh, random acts of percussion. It's hashtag random acts of percussion. And it doesn't have anything really to do with the drum wallet other than it's just me as a percussionist doing some of the things that we do during the day. And they're just uh, kind of fun little 45 second videos of weird me hitting stuff basically. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone loves that as much as cat videos. So I think you're onto something. So. <laughs> yeah, they, rank, they rank up there pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I will link to the, um, some of your social and the website on the show notes for this afterwards. So I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great having you on. Um, and uh, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for listening to Behind the Backline, brought to you by Active Media. You can find Active Media at active.media. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and iTunes to learn more about great products and leave a review to let us know what you thought of this episode. We encourage you to share us with your friends and colleagues via social media, and we'll see you next time. Take care.